Okay, let's move on to our next speaker on the line. We have Dr. Rodrigo Salvatierra, Chief Science Officer at Zeta Energy, and his talk will be on lithium sulfur batteries using 3D lithium anodes and sulfurized carbon. Rodrigo, whenever you're ready, stage is yours. Please go ahead. Yes, let me start so I can make it in time. Well, my name is Rodrigo Salvatierra. I'm going to talk about uh, our solutions for anodes, uh, lithium metal anodes and, so, and sulfur cathodes. And before, uh, let me introduce a little bit about our company. We are currently 40 people. Uh, we are a company based in Houston, Texas, and we have a team, a good blend of teams of uh, scientists and industry experts in a lab of 6,000 square feet. The company was founded in 2018, but we started operations in 2022. So we are a two-year-old company. Uh, currently, we are in the middle of a Series B, uh, uh, aiming at uh, building our next building, which is a pilot plan. And we have two uh, governmental projects funded by the Department of Energy, the ARPA-E and the VTO that was granted this year. And as a company, we are a manufacturer of batteries and materials. We do sulfur, lithium sulfur batteries, but we also do sulfur cathodes and anode structures. So before introducing our technology, it's important to make a good reference with uh, current lithium ion and, and, and regular lithium sulfur. Lithium ion, uh, uh, it's the mainstream technology, but for kilowatt hour of lithium ion battery, typically you consume a kilogram of metals, a combination of nickel, cobalt, or manganese, and those uh, they speak to the ability for this technology to scale for massive electrification of transportation and grid and so on. So we know that these elements are not geographically well distributed, which sometimes people question about how, what is the ability of expanding this to, to large sectors. In addition to that, this technology is now to be reaching a limit in performance. So we, you can do tweaks, but the, the energy performance, the energy performance of this battery is reaching 300 watt per kilogram or close to that. Lithium sulfur seems to be the, the perfect replacement because you're replacing the active materials by an abundant material like sulfur and the performance of the sulfur and the lithium metal, they are, they, they far outperforms the current cathode and the anode. However, there are two main issues in this technology. You lose material by losing sulfur, uh, known as the polysulfide shuttle, and the lithium metal produces dendrites. So our solution to these problems is to provide a solution where the sulfur is fixed, it's solid across all states of charge. We don't have solubility of sulfur species during the battery operation. And our lithium metal does not produce dendrites. So we have a very efficient use of the materials. So in order to introduce the technology, I'm gonna talk separately about the anode, the cathode, and then the cell. So as you know, and lithium metal anodes are the ideal anode for lithium ion battery because the graphometric capacity can extend to over 10 times that of the graphite. But that's only true if you use very low excesses of lithium metal. If you use low excesses of lithium metal, typically you will experience a huge volume expansion, which aggravates the problems of dendrites and aggravates the consumption of electrolyte forcing you to use an excess of both in the cell. So you basically lose the advantages of lithium metal. To solve that, what we did is instead of having this flat lithium metal, we support the lithium metal entirely by uh, our IP on, on growing carbon nanotubes directly from the substrates, from the current collector, in this case, copper, but we can do that in other metals. We have an absolute control, a precise control of height, density, and which determines bundling and spacing, and that leads to create very tunable electrochemical performances. When we have the support, the carbon nanotubes, they add almost no weight to the current collector, but they provide the mechanical and the conductive support to create this three-dimensional lithium metal anode. But not only is the three-dimensional lithium metal anode responsible for the improved performance and the dendrite-free operation, you also have a three-dimensional SCI that is formed from this two-dimensional lithium metal. This SCI is gonna be now treated more and uh, more benignly compared to a flat lithium metal where you have a huge volume expansion. So that creates conditions for you to have a very stable SCI and you have ability to use very low excesses of lithium metal, thus capturing the true advantages of lithium metal gravimetric capacity. 
We can make a lot of the CNTs. 